This takes me back to college. I became intrigued with uh, the theory of relativity. And uh, the theory of relativity describes the universe in terms of space-time uh, and events, events distributed in space-time. You could think of them like dots on a Christmas tree or dots in space. Uh, only the space includes not just three dimensions, but the dimension of time. Events in the future are listed as well as events now. So the whole thing becomes a rather static picture, like a map in three or four dimensions where you have dots represent events. But to me, I'd been through a very uh, drastic personal experience in 1927, and time could not be represented as a structure. Time carried surprises, carried the unexpected. The, the direction of time was essential. You could look back, hindsight is an exact science. Foresight is the unknown. And this basic asymmetry in time was ignored by relativity. And I find physicists don't like that concept of asymmetry of time. They like to think of time as just the same looking back as looking forward. I heard Feinberg say uh, ES, uh, precognition is no problem to a physicist. We'd much prefer to have it symmetrical so you look back as easily as looking, I mean, look forward as easily as looking back. But to me, that misses out what I call a second level, this whole dimension of experience, which makes the pain and the pleasure, the things uh, you're trying to find good solutions, ones that will give you pleasure, and you're trying to avoid the unpleasant ones. And time is the place where these things happen. The unexpected happens. You're always, why would you bother to go into the future if it wasn't that you expected to solve something that's currently a problem in the, pe in the present? So really, this, what's more important than time is this asymmetry, this fact that you look forward to the future and you look back on the past. So this led to my calling it a theory of time structure. And then I soon shifted to a theory of process. But at that time, I didn't have any concept of stages or finite number of stages, or especially that the stages should have a distinct character. I just thought it's got to be a process rather than a structure. And it wasn't until years later, as I said, when somebody reminded me about the Taurus and that there were seven colors required to make a map on a Taurus, I said to myself, well, if, if structure can be represented by this sphere, that everything there, fixed in space-time, then this other dimension of uh, folding in on itself, uh, which is supplied by the torus, uh, deals with this possibility of change, this, this growingness, because the growingness is not just a subsidence of an agitation that started with the Big Bang. It's a growing from within that the universe does to itself. The universe creates creatures that can grow and then move and eventually reflect on the nature of the universe, <laughs> namely persons.